Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to the moon. I'm your host this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my wonderful co-host, Ricardo Martinez. But uh, more importantly, uh, today we have the pleasure of interviewing Renato Salazar, uh, long-time uh, youth development warrior at Elzante and Bitcoin program manager at Nonprofit uh, New Story. How are you doing today, uh, my friend? How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for, ha for having me. And Greetings from Hope House in El Sante. Greetings. Yes, uh, it's uh, awesome to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much for being our guest today. Uh, I'm sure we've got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about for our listeners. Uh, but yeah, I guess first question to get us off the bat. Um, your background obviously is around uh, El Zonte and you're, you're working with Bitcoin uh, with New Story and, and before that you're at Strike. What's your story around uh, El Zonte and, and Bitcoin Beach? Like how did you first get involved in, in the whole project? Okay, first of all, I've been close to the community for several years before it started as Bitcoin Beach. You know, my friends here with, you know, Roman, Jorge, here being the leaders, the community leaders here. Uh, they start to work with the community, with kids, with uh, teenagers. So I was part of it, you know, helping them with some activities. And uh, it be suddenly it became a, it, it started to evolve the Bitcoin Beach concept, right? So the, then they started, you know, all the revolution with Bitcoin here in El Sante. And I was just, you know, like I as a how do you say? I was just looking around, you know. I, I was just part of it, but uh, they were actually doing. Uh, the whole effort of be creating the uh, financial ecosystem here. That's how it started. Gotcha. Was that like your first, um, was that your first introduction to Bitcoin or was it something that you'd dealt with before? Yes, it was my first introduction here. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Was like, well, I, what, if you're being honest, what was the first thing you thought when you first heard it? I want to know what your honest thoughts were when you're like, what the hell is this crap? Or is it a scam? Actually, or... yeah, that was my first, my first impression like, what the heck is Bitcoin? You know, it, it was hot ahead, you know, trying to send me, oh, come on, download this, download that, and, and I'm going to send you some Bitcoin. Was, so, what am I going to do with that, right? But then I learned, you know, they taught me how to use it and, you know, how, how to, uh, actually, it triggers, you know, the financial uh, side of me, you know, that open a re the reality of people, you know, that we, how the system works, you know, that's what it, it, it triggered on me. So what, no. it was pretty cool, you know, like a, an eye opener situation. Yeah, nice. I guess. Um, do you know how? Do you know how long it worked, how long ago it was that, that Bitcoin kind of entered the the fold, entered the story of of El Zonte, like the the community project? When was that? I'm trying to think how long ago I first uh, heard about it. It was three years ago. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's three years ago. Yeah. I think I. Yeah. I think it was during beginning. Of, I think during COVID that I heard about it. Um, it was so right. That, right before. Yeah. Right before COVID. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's really it's pretty cool. Like um, that you had that introduction at that time, uh, especially when the price was a bit lower, so uh, you had a chance to you know, stack <laughs> some more sats. Um, but I can understand how like you would it would feel like a kind of I don't know. I, I feel like it it would feel potentially like a bit of a pyramid scheme or something. You know, you, you worry your friends get involved in something, and then you understand it. You're like, oh, okay, no, it's not that bad um for sure and then for people out there listening i guess uh, we should clarify that, like bitcoin beach uh, is a local uh project uh, where like helping children learn to surf keep fit etc etc and then it, it's obviously like grown and become a, a project where bitcoin is like, it's like a bitcoin circular economy um and it's like a shiny example of uh, how it can help the local communities uh, gain financial independence um but yeah i um so yeah, you obviously you you're involved in that. How did you end up getting involved with with Strike? Because uh, that's kind of like uh, the next part of the story, I suppose. Yeah, um, you know, as Bitcoin Beach start to bring attention from Bitcoiners, you know, and companies and enthusiasts, or Bitcoin enthusiasts, uh, you know, Jack and his friend and his friends came to El Sante, and you know, and you know, they they learn about the community and they walk with us around here. And, and they say like they wanted to be part of this, you know, help the community because Strike is a, like a very useful tool for remittances. And you, as you know, you know, like, like uh, Lightning Wallet. So uh, I, we, uh, my friend and I started to work with them you know, here in the community and, uh, you know, showing people how to use Strike, how to use Bitcoin and uh, how they can take advantage with remittances. And, you know, remittances here is a, is a big thing. You know, there's 400, 400 millions a year sent through remittances. So 
it's a lot of the GPD here. That's how it started with Strike. And then, um, you know, Bitcoin law became, you know, when Bitcoin started as a legal tender a few months later that, that, of that. So everything exploded here, you know. It, it brought a lot of companies, a lot of work, a lot of development, and, uh, and it put El Salvador in the, in the eye of the, you know, in the Bitcoin world. How have you, how many people are actually using uh, Bitcoin for remittances like that you know personally, um, as opposed to like the traditional rails like Western Union or whatever? Well, I don't have the exact numbers because it's hard to tell. You know, like it's like to know everybody, uh, like everybody, you know, movement, you know, with their wallets. But uh, there's a statistic that said that in it increased like twenty five percent. You know, it would be 25 or 35 percent of remittances. Remember that we're still like learning how to use this, right, for our community, for our people, which is the 80 percent of the population that does that don't, don't have access to a financial system here. So we are we are still on that curve. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of learning to do for for a lot of people. Um, but I um yeah I mean. Well, I'm trying to think when I was there, um, it was November 21, I think, whenever the uh, adopting Bitcoin conference was. Um, yeah. But I was um, pretty happy with like, I've been talking to people, just general people like uh, taxi drivers and stuff and just asking like, hey, dude, honestly, what's your opinion? Is this thing a pain in the ass or is this something that, you know, you're interested in? <laughs> and generally people seem like at least open-minded. Like if they, you know, some people were a bit like, oh, look, you know, I, I haven't got into it yet, but I'm like, I'm trying to like understand it. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, these people are vaguely open-minded that I, that I spoke to, you know, varying ages. So that was kind of cool. Um but yeah, I guess um, if you're if you're being honest, and obviously it's a bit of a personal question, so feel, feel free to tell me to, to f off. But um, if you're being honest, like how how much of the time are you finding that you use Bitcoin compared to dollars? Like, have you got like a rough like idea of like how often you'd use Bitcoin in your life? Is it like a lot or not much? Or how often do you do I use it? Yeah, it's... like do you do you like live on Bitcoin or dollars <clears> or <throat> mix or I don't know. I'm just interested to find out. I will say a mix because I well I do my bill payment through bitrefill using bitcoin of course <laughs> and uh i get to i get to pay some stuff you know also on different restaurants you know where well strikes has some promotions some good deals going on so we take advantage of those gotcha okay yeah so it's like um i suppose it would it would be I, I guess it, uh, where it makes sense, right? Because with bill pay, there's like an incentive to do it. And then some restaurants don't accept it. Some do, as you said, some have deals. Um, so sometimes it is just, you know, uh, easier maybe to spend your fiat, um, spend your dollars, uh, especially if a place doesn't accept Bitcoin. Uh, it's like a big hassle. <laughs> I remember sometimes when we were going around, it was like, you know, part of me is like, yeah, I should be orange pilling or whatever. And sometimes, but then some of me is like, yeah, I just want to eat my fish and leave. Like, <laughs> I just, want, I want to go on my day. I don't have like all day to orange pill people. Um, so that's the reality, I guess. But okay, no, that's cool. And I, I suppose, um, so yeah, I was going to ask you if you use a bit refill, but obviously, the answer yeah. is yes for like uh, yes. bill payment um, and things like that. When did you first hear about BitRefill? Actually, I'm just curious now. Like, this isn't we don't usually talk about BitRefill that much on a podcast, but I'm just interested. Like, when you first uh, heard about us? Well, it was here in in El Sante, You know that you guys. I don't know if if it was Sir Sergey that, that came came here. So that was the first time that I they heard about BitRefill, and then you know, uh, you guys start to do more work over here. You know, getting more uh vendors or brands you know into your into your app so it, it became a big deal you know I, actually you know when strike started here people was using bit refill to get you know uh video game you know access free fire <laughs> free fire yes. free fire diamonds i remember that period yes, diamonds <laughs> diamonds that was the thing yeah yeah, free fire diamonds. That was like a like a, a like a internal like currency, like a joke, like internal currency. It was like, oh, free fire diamonds are them. You know, that's it. You know, that's that's what you yes. want because there's so many free fire diamond like uh, cards getting purchased. It was just like it was this sort of thing. Um, I remember that. Um, so yeah, I guess you yeah you ended. It's quite cool. Like you ended up obviously yeah you're helping the community stuff. You end up working with Strike. Um, what was it like? Many community based stuff and like any kind of marketing or anything, or was it was it mainly like just kind of community management sort of based stuff or what was the role what was that role kind of like working with them uh you know it was more like uh, it started like a brand ambassador you know like brand ambassador that's how we started and then 
when the when the Bitcoin law started and you know they open an office in San Salvador and all the you know it, it required a, a infrastructure a stronger infrastructure so I, I became a partnerships manager so that was my my job right there pretty cool by the awesome. way yeah it's really cool yeah, yeah, yeah I imagine damn okay that's, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's an awesome way to like, because especially when you're starting as a brand ambassador and then you work your way up, um, it's pretty cool. Um, yes, you get to know a lot of people. You know, you know, you know how it is the Bitcoin environment and how people is very passionate about the work and about you know the the freedom and you know financial inclusion. That's that's what that's what I what I love about Strike. Yeah, I can understand. That. Hey, I mean, I started a bit refill. I think like three hours or four hours a week as a brand ambassador. So, uh, <laughs> and then I've slowly, you know, progressed. So, uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of know what you mean. And, and so what you're doing now, obviously, yeah, the, what you're doing at Stripe was, was awesome, but now you've moved on. So yeah. please, uh, free free to tell us about your, your current, uh, project. Well, what are you working on right now? Who are you working with? Uh, give us the, the lowdown, explain it to um, me as if I've never heard uh heard of what you're doing um and yeah as if i'm the audience basically cool well uh new story is a non-profit organization that give access to families to get their homes you know the families that lives in in inadequate homes i don't know if the word i it's pronounced it well so the idea is to to give them the tools so families can can get a decent home at the end of the day that's it you know because you know how our culture here in central america uh, families don't have access to any bank service. That's, you know, same as, as a financial inclusion, right? So big refill, I mean, sorry, new story. New story gives the, gives the tools for that. So we are providing homes for families at this point. And here in El Sonte, they're going to pay the micro mortgage using Bitcoin for that home. So this is a big thing here in, for, well, for the community, for El Salvador and for the Bitcoin community, of course. You know, providing homes for people. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw I saw something on the website about mortgages uh, on the blockchain and and like about Bitcoin. So, like, what's your what's your kind of your your role is obviously as the um, Bitcoin program manager. Um, like, what is what what was that? Like, what would that encounter like, encompass? So, what, what's kind of like your overarching goal, right? Like in that role, and and what's your kind of like day to day kind of thing like? Because obviously, it's Bitcoin program manager isn't the kind of role you see on every job. Board. <laughs> and so it's interesting to hear like yeah. what that's about, like what you get up to. Yeah, because not uh new story is, is not a, a crypto company, right? So I'm I'm doing the, the developing the Bitcoin program. What is it about? Is that um, we're gonna teach families how to use Bitcoin so they can pay, so that how how they can use Bit Refill actually, because that's something that I wanted to mention that uh we're gonna work with with, with Bit Refill so families can pay through Bit Refill their homes. So basically, I'm going to teach families how to use it. And I'm going to be, um, how do you say this? Um, I'm, I'm starting since the, since the very beginning of the construction until, you know, families get, you get to know how to use by themselves to pay and how to use Bitcoin. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, you'll help. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting rationalizing it in my head. So you'll help kind of project manage. Yeah, so there'll be, say, for example, you've got, I don't know, a random number, 20 families and, uh, you know, the, there's been like donations, et cetera, and they're trying to help them kind of start up. Obviously, you'll get come in at like, yeah, as you said, the construction phase. And then it's like kind of helping them essentially get ready, get prepared, like learn to pay the mortgages, et cetera, with Bitcoin and the bills and the things they need to do. And is it is it that like a new story will be kind of accepting or ha is accepting already like Bitcoin donations as well? And so that's why? Is, yes. Is that, is that what yes, they are. They, they are uh, that's how it started actually because they receive a donation of bitcoin and that's how i well i wasn't part of the team at that time but that's what triggered you know to start you know exploring this path you know to use bitcoin and receiving payments with bitcoin so um and i i'm sorry that i didn't add this i mentioned this as the it's not only to show people how to use it but you know it's starting from how to download the app what is the best, you know, uh, use that you can have for your Bitcoin wallet? You know, how it's not only for paying, you know, how you can stack sets, you know, it's financial education at the end of the day. And actually we have right now, I'm sorry, that we have right now 120, 126 families. That's gonna be first, first, first phase 
and at the end of the at the end of the year uh, next year it's going to be around 400 man that's uh, that's awesome that's really awesome hell yeah are yeah. these houses being built in el zante or is this all over el salvador uh right now here in el zante the project starts here actually there is a what we call el zante pilot which started it started with eight families and uh that's what that's what it's going on right now uh, as we speak uh but the what we call Lomas del Sonte, El Sonte Hills, it's gonna start, you know, and um, probably in a month, you know, that's how it, uh, we're gonna start training them next month on September and uh, construction is gonna start on October. Wow, that's, uh, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Okay, so like, uh, I was gonna ask you uh, like, hey, you know, what prompted, like what, what made you decide to make that decision to kind of, because obviously strike sounds like it was a yeah fun, exciting time and like important work. Obviously this kind of sounds more, even more important. Like, I, is that what, what, I mean, I'll ask you anyway, because but it seems like the answer is obvious now, but like, what, what was it that kind of prompted you uh, to kind of, well, to make this, uh, this new development in your story, new story, Get it? New so, story yeah. terrible joke. Uh, what was it that prompted <laughs> you to make that? <laughs> make that? Well, you know, I started here, uh, you know, being part of the community, helping the community, you know, uh, supporting some educational programs, you know, supporting some uh, spiritual things that we do here, of course, uh, as well. And uh, so these will bring me back again to the community, you know, to be part again, like an everyday, an everyday basis. That's how, that's how it is right now. So, and of course, giving home to family is a very different feeling you know, so it's, it's a very, that was, I forgot the word fulfillment, you know. Fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. I, I think like, uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of people would want to make that switch to if they can, right? Like it, it makes sense to, to do something that is obviously making you happy and helping and in, in default kind of helping other people is kind of what often makes us happy anyway. Right. So, yeah. um, that's, yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, I love it. I guess like uh, so. When so when did this kind of happen? Like this this switch to to new story. Uh, it was a couple of months ago. It was on uh, May. Yes, it was May May right. this year. Yeah, I, because I I knew new story since last year. You know, because I met them here in Alzante as well. You know, I knew about the project. I knew about the the families and what what was going on, and uh, and I and I start talking to them. You know. I, I helped them with some marketing materials because I, I had some digital marketing experience. So I, I helped them in a couple of projects and then uh, we start talking a little bit more and then an opportunity up and so here I am. <laughs> yeah, here you are. Makes, uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense to me, man. That's for sure. Uh, Renato, I wanted to ask you, since the Bitcoin law, it's almost been a year since it's passed. Um, like, what's the state of things? How, how are the people uh, of El Salvador like, looking at bitcoin still and then also um has like the price impacted people's experience with bitcoin like do they see it as kind of like oh no because the price fell from like seventy thousand dollars almost to to i think we're at what like twenty three thousand yeah well you will have the, the two sides of the coin here right because there's people that don't know about it but they only hear you know the bad news like oh it dropped the prices dropped so you know it's a scam it's a scam but you, you have the other side the people that knows are, that knows what is it about. So uh, I will say, people here is learning still, as I mentioned before. They're still learning, and uh, and of course our our role here, as as well as you guys and myself, is to teach about this. You know, it's not only, it's not that I'm not saying oh no, don't be afraid. It will go up. The price will go up. It's not only that, right? It's, it it has to be more. It, you have to to be more. Uh, I I don't have the word. Uh, you have to get more courage, you know, to talk about Bitcoin because here in Salvador, of course, context here uh, for everybody, Bitcoin is an asset. Here is a currency, right? So oh, what I can do with Bitcoin here, I can you know get medicines i can buy i can buy medicines right away because i can receive remittances right in, in in a second you know i don't have to wait you know 24 hours or i have to pay 75 dollars to receive 200 dollars for my emergency medicines so that's another thing 
I can have access to new technology. I'm exposed to new technology. I know about financials. I know how the system works. So that is, that's step by step. There's a program here called uh, My First Bitcoin. There's the, those guys are doing a great job, you know, going to schools, you know, actually training kids how to use Bitcoin, how it works. So uh, maybe right now we're not seeing on the news the impact, but we are, uh, they are putting the seed, you know, and we're going to see that in a, I will say next in a couple a couple next years. Yeah, it's um, it's gonna be big, and I think it's uh, I, I I'm so glad it's happening. Um, especially because for El Salvador, like, hey, you know, being honest, I never thought I'd ever visit El Salvador in my life. You know, like it's <laughs> it's one of those things where you're growing up in the UK. I think I may have heard about it once or twice in geography, but I, I didn't I didn't know much. You know, yeah. I didn't hear anything. I, I just didn't uh it's uh it's because it's a, it probably because it's a small country geographically right and it's far away from me um yet there i was visiting like el salvador um and it was only the second country in all of uh all of south america last time that i'd ever ever visited uh which is pretty cool so i think uh the fact that it's bringing eyes to the country and the fact that it's bringing jobs and tourism is just awesome it's been like kind of like a cheat code to do that and i think uh what you said as well about um about Bitcoin, like sort of remit, people can get remittance and then immediately uh, pay for like pharmacy prescriptions or food or whatever is 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 really important. I mean, even in my life, right, as someone, because I'm moving to Brazil uh, next month, and like for me to, I keep trying to think, okay, right, so I want to rent a place, um, but I can't rent a place. I can't. I can't get a bank account without a Brazilian ID. I have to get once I get there with my visa. So how am I going <laughs> to, so this is like yeah. catch 22, right? So how do I, okay. So I can't, so I'm like, okay, is there any way I can send pics, which is like the instant bank transfer without the bank account? Okay. There is this app. So I get this app. Okay. But now I've got to find a way to get my pounds into Hey eyes. And then that's going to cost yeah. loads of money and it can take ages. I can't send that much. So yeah, like realistically, the best way is to like use, I have Bitcoin anyway, but to turn any bank account money I had left into Bitcoin to then send it to exchange to then send it to, it's kind of like you just realize that hey if everyone just and, and a lot of friends i have who have no idea about crypto at all and bitcoin at all um especially ones in brazil and they're like oh wow yeah see how much easier life would be for just everyone in the world if we all just use bitcoin i'm like yes exactly. it would be like <laughs> so yeah. 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 yeah um it's, everything's quick and it's just cross like cross borders there's no worries whatsoever and yeah, it just um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. So I can see how that would help people even more in El Salvador than than me, a uh, dude who's you know. Yes. You know. Well, in now with, with new story, you can get a home. You know, where in the world you can get a home is in Bitcoin, right? And now, uh, of course, the the house, the social housing, is it goes beyond that. That giving just a roof. Here in El Salvador, we have six months of rain, very hard. It, it's been raining pretty hard. So now that I'm into this field of social housing, social housing, I understand more like for our country, El Salvador is you know, a third world country, uh, families that don't have access to a bank system so they can not get a, a, a decent home. They have to be worried all the time about their belongings when it rains or for safety. So kids are, are in, you know, focus on their studies. So if, if, we, if you're not focused, on your studies, you're not focused on dreams. You're not. You don't have hope. You're just surviving here. If you don't have an adequate home, so that's the that's what new story brings. Actually, it is a new story for those families. You know, it will bring you know uh, uh, hopes, dreams, um, uh, and and the other one is I forgot. Uh, like when you want to achieve new stuff, right? When you when you feel that you can do it, right? Like um. Okay, like belief or like goals or something. I'm trying to think of the right word for this, but yeah, um, yes. passion, I guess, or yeah, gives you. I guess it gives people strength, right? To think, oh shit, okay, like I can actually. Like, this is an option for me. Um, yeah, because when you when you when you don't have an adequate home here, at least in a suburb, a lot, a lot of cities, you know, you you have dirt as as a floor. As floor. You don't have a, a like a, a solid concrete floor. You have dirt, so you will have a, a lot of diseases, right? You know. Uh, stomach or breathing or whatever you know so you have to deal with those things instead of as probably we all when we were born we didn't have those issues right what was our purpose i mean what was our opportunity 
opportunity was like, yeah, I can go to school. You know, I can get, I, I can get to get my toys, but people here don't. So now with a, with a, with a better home, you have a better life. How are you guys choosing which families will be um, assisted like with, with a house? Uh, we work together with a part, with a local partner and the government here. So they, they run a, uh, a program. They run like, um, uh, how do you say this? Uh, you have to fill a form, right? So like an application. So an application. application, yeah. You, you go through a process on, of an application. So if you, you, I mean, almost everybody do it. So you can, you pass it that you can pay, you know, for this home. Um, there are people that pays, you know, 150 for a room that is not even concrete room. So, you know, like, uh, so if you pay $60 for a house, it's so different, right? So that's, yeah. Uh, so answering your question, you have to pass, you have to go through a filter. And what's the demand been like? Have you guys just had like an overwhelming demand from families uh, submitting these applications? Yes, that's a lot of families, you know, uh, request uh, the need, the need of a home, right? So they are, uh, we had, for, as I mentioned before, 400 families for this project, but New Story already had built more than 10 communities here. It's almost 10,000, I mean, 1,000 homes, you know, built here in El Salvador. Wow. Okay. So there's quite a few made already. I mean, um, I, in fact, actually I'll, I'll ask right now before I and mean, I'll ask again at the end, but how can someone donate to, to new story either in fiat or, or Bitcoin? Yeah, they can go to our website, newstorycharity.org slash donate, and you can find a way that you can donate. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So newstory.org slash donate. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Cause I want to ask now, obviously in case anyone's listening to this bit and then they, yeah. so that'll, uh, that'll make sure they know how to, to donate and obviously help more, more families in El Salvador get um, competent housing. Cause as you say, it's one of those things you take for granted is even just as a child. Yeah. Like I can get water to drink easily and like go to school and learn and play with my friends or whatever. But obviously, as you say, if, if you're, you know, I'm having illnesses from, from having inadequate housing or yeah protecting your possessions and yourself yeah. um you don't really have time to worry about anything else essentially um so it makes a huge difference to young people's lives as well as uh, adults too um yeah that's crazy well yeah i can definitely see why you've made your move uh, to new story that's for sure um is it something that um yeah something i'm i'm kind of interested in it's a bit of a topic switch but i just kind of thought of this i was thinking hey you're someone who has been involved with Bitcoin now for yeah, like three years or so since the the project uh, Bitcoin Beach project became from from the community project that it was. Um, what's uh, what's kind of the strangest uh, or like weirdest kind of story you've got like around? I was just thinking of this. I know it's a complete switch of topic, but I was just kind of thinking to lighten <laughs> the mood here. Um, like you must have. I was thinking, okay, you must have seen because there's obviously like people who've come to visit and. Like you had Jack visiting and Strike, and so there's a lot of stuff you've like been through in the Bitcoin world. And I know that Bitcoiners and generally crypto people are usually pretty uh, wacky and passionate. So I was just interested to see like what's the craziest story you could think of um, that's happened to around you or to you or, or something like that that you've heard of. Oh well, I, well maybe the cra there was a crazy guy. I'm not gonna say his name, of course. But uh, he came as a YouTuber, right? Like a crypto YouTuber. I have a crypto YouTube channel, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, you know, create content for you guys. I'm gonna, I wanna help you guys, you know, uh, you Bitcoin Beach team, right? So I was just listening, you know, and then when he started to, he brought his camera, and we were waiting for a crew, you know. Sometimes these guys have one or two people, you know, as a crew. So, uh, so we we said, I mean, the team here said, okay, let's do it was just you know curious and I, I want to follow this guy and see what what is this about so it's a you know a long hair blonde guy you know, and then and, and and he was like okay let's go let's go outside let's go let's go walk the community let's go walk here and uh and I I, I want to go to jail what do you mean you want to go to jail <laughs> like he wants he wanted to go with his camera to jail and film the the guys in jail you know how a Salvador jail looks like for a Bitcoin content, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "What? Oh yeah, but 
and at the end of the day, it was just him by himself, you know, with uh, probably 75 followers on his YouTube channel at all times. <laughs> it was like, yeah, let's do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> did he, like, oh, oh my God, you're probably like, no, you don't want to go to jail, mate, trust me. Did he, did he, yeah. did, did he go to jail? Did he succeed or no? No, no, he didn't. He didn't because nobody wanted wanted to to take him, you know, to that place, right? Maybe a taxi driver took him, but no one here wanted to drive him there. I mean, he, you know, he was all sweaty, you know, like the his shirt was, you know, straight to his chest, and like, let's go, let's go. I, I want to get the content. I want to get the content because the craziest, you know, he has he had this quote like, the craziest content will called the craziest movement sort of you know that was his motto kind of thing you know i love the it passion was, i guess but, yeah, uh, yeah the passion was so good you know, but he was crazy <laughs> yeah yeah uh, <laughs> i wanted to change the subject again um new stories a non-profit uh my first bitcoin is also a non-profit bitcoin beach is a non-profit uh toro goes dev is a non-profit um it seems like Bitcoin's really uh, impacted like the, the social aid um, aspect of things in El Salvador. Would you say that's accurate or is it just uh, my perception from doing interviews with people that are doing nonprofits in El Salvador? I will say yes, because well, Tor, Tor was that, you know, they're focused on education. You know, they're giving away free education um, for uh, developers. Uh, my first Bitcoin is educating on Bitcoin, you know, how to use Bitcoin. And uh, well, us, we are giving homes here. And there's, well, my first Bitcoin, you know, you, you probably know about it. Uh, I mean, uh, built with Bitcoin, you know, they're doing another stuff here in El Salvador as well. You know, you know it's like a, the whole thing, uh, it's not only a commercial or business thing on Bitcoin, but also the, the community side of it, which is just putting everything together. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking now, um about that story you told me and then the, the new story kind of thing uh sorry guys there's, there's a lot of uses of the word story uh, in this podcast already <laughs> i keep uh, yeah. i keep using all the story puns uh unintentionally as well at times um but i suppose is there is there any advice that you've got because obviously we're talking about these different non-profits and, and the difference that is being made um part of it is obviously to, to get to get better with this and to kind of increase the effectiveness and increase the amount of donations coming through and just increase the awareness of everyone globally um about bitcoin and how they can use it to, and how they can spend it um is there like any tips that you have for because obviously there's people potentially listening from many different community projects who want to start a community project or want to help out the charity who know a thing or two about bitcoin is there any like uh tips you have for kind of like orange pilling people i suppose like um because obviously you've worked in that quite a lot, like with the community and being a brand ambassador and then working on partnerships. Is there any kind of like, uh, yeah, tips or advice you have? Is there like kind of like things you, you check for in your head when you try or questions you ask or anything like that that you could tell people? Well, first of all, uh, it's something, something that I learned here in the story is being transparent. You know, all the, all what we get, it goes straight to the families, to, to, to homes. Uh, there's another, another donor area that supports the operation. But, uh, but what we get on, on the website, for example, it goes straight to the, to the families, you know, transparent, being transparent as, as transparent as it gets, you know, the more transparent you, you can be with it. Like, okay, I'm getting this $10 and these $10 are going to this family, you know, specifically, you know, and uh, it's not only, okay, we, we're getting your money, uh, and we'll help someone, you know, in El Salvador, like, you know, put a name where your help is going. And uh, being a facilitator, you know, I, something that I learned for, from the community, from Bitcoin communities that we are not, uh, you know, close, we are open to help. And, and, not, and not only for communities, you know, help to develop more uh, leaders, more <clears throat> schools, more, uh, programs is like, <clears throat> sorry, uh, being a, a, like a network connector, like open the door always for everybody, always, uh, being willing to, uh, I, let, let me put the idea together. I got this here. Like being a facilitator, 
just yes, okay, I, I see the need here, but I see who, who can help here. So I'm gonna connect them, right? It's, even though I'm not part of it, but I can do it. So be, being a facilitator is something that I learned from the community, from the Bitcoin community. Uh, also, Rodrigo is one of them, you know, from you guys, from BitRefill, he's one of them. You know, I learned a lot of it, you know, being like that. And, um, and one other thing, <clears throat> don't, don't waste the time of people. Like, okay, there's a project that we wanna build, for example, a project that we wanna do next month. And uh, okay, I'm gonna put this, this uh, organization, I'm gonna bring these people so they can see this project, but the project, it not, it's not really happening. So don't do it. Just don't put just ideas, you know, put, put a word in it and, and, and make it happen. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. I can imagine there's a lot of, well, I, I mean, in all of life, there's people who always have like great ideas, but then like actually executing yeah. on them is another thing. And as you say, like, I think that's important for like any, to be honest, anything really. I mean, nonprofits, businesses, governments, I mean, you, you kind of want to know where your money's going essentially. Um, so for example, if I paid my taxes and I got told where specifically every pound of my taxes went, I'd feel much better about paying my taxes than I do now. Um, whereas currently I feel like I'm being robbed. Um, I'd probably still feel like I'm being robbed, but at least I would feel a little bit better about it. Uh, you know, yeah. and, uh, it would, it'd be less painful, I think. Uh, so yeah. yeah. And when you give to a charity, yeah, there's part of me because there obviously was uh scandals before in the past uh at least here where like you know it turned out like charities were like 95 percent paying for like their offices and stuff so only like you know only a tiny percentage of money donated was going towards actually helping people and so that you hear about stuff like that so yeah if, if i i often feel a lot better if i'm giving to a charity that like i know for sure for example here the stroke foundation like my family works like in the local area with the stroke foundation to do organizations and things like that. so i know for sure hey this money's actually going to go into like helping the local community of people who need it um so i often give to to, to straight foundation if i can choose so yeah like i think if you have that 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 local knowledge or just as you say like you're being as transparent as possible with anyone about like hey this is where this money is going to to this person and you create a face and a story then it's the same effect as me knowing for sure because my family uh, helps out with one charity then i know okay it almost feels the same really because i know that i feel like i know the people i got a name i got a face i got you know um transparency on where the money's going so it's kind of the same effect yes. as knowing the person in person i guess is yes. what that's about i uh, think the the additional uh, transparency of the blockchain too to be able to see like oh my donation went to this address now it went to this address um helps with that also uh renato i wanted to ask yeah. you uh bitcoin beach kind of shook um shook the world with with the the project kind of getting international acclaim first um as a circular bitcoin economy and having an influx of bitcoiners and bitcoin tourism and, and stuff like that um now bitcoin beach has kind of inspired other projects like bitcoin lake bitcoin akasi uh bitcoin mm -hmm. beach brazil uh, there's i know i'm forgetting others there, there's a whole bunch yeah. of them um and then Rodrigo recently shared a white paper that Bitcoin Beach put mm -hmm. out to kind of like help yeah. people start Bitcoin communities. And I actually gave that to someone here in Colombia that wants to start a Bitcoin community. Um, how closely is Bitcoin Beach working with these other uh, Bitcoin circular economies and, and community aid projects? Well, you know, here is, you know, these guys are open to help anyone, right? And that's why they developed the, the, the white paper. Um, so if anyone needs any assistance, they, they can come over here and learn how to do it. Uh, and of course, I, I've seen these, these guys, you know, busy all day, you know, uh, answering questions, emails or tweets, you know, people asking like, Hey, how, how can I do this? How can I do that? So on a daily basis, they're helping, you know, every day, you know, every day, everybody. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, to have people like that willing to help out and to to write something that people can share as well so that others can kind of try and help out their local community is is awesome and yeah it's great to see the growth i mean i, I hear about new bitcoin projects that i didn't even hear about before popping up all the time um and obviously one or two may not may not work out so great as people intend but 
a lot seemed to be progressing. And I remember, yeah, Bitcoin Beach Brazil, for example, hearing about that in its like yeah. first few days, I think it was. Uh, and now it seems to have grown quite a lot. I think it's changed its name to prior Bitcoin potentially, uh, or it could be something else even. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, there's a lot of, uh, of projects that are going on. So my, my hope is that this can be done in tons of communities around the world uh, until we get to the point where realistically, you know, people are just yeah. using Bitcoin by choice uh, in, 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 on mass. You mentioned um, how new story uh, and BitRefill would potentially be uh, like collaborating in ways or helping each other out. Um, I never, I didn't know much. I don't know much about it. So, like, it'd be cool if you could tell me how how we're going to be helping helping out a uh, new story. I'd, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, sure. You you will find new story as a uh, I, how do you call guys vendor or brand? You know, a business yeah, brand business. Yeah, yeah one of our products. So, products. Yeah. Yeah. So you will find new story as a product in, in, in BitRefill. So people will have their names, their home, their phone number, and then pay. So people will be, will be paying monthly on BitRefill. So if they pay, you know, with Bitcoin Beach or, you know, Strike, that will get them, you know, 5% cash back. And of course, they're going to they're, they're gonna learn how to, how to pay their bills you know, on BitRefill. So that's something that we're we're creating materials for that also, you know, with you guys. Right. Are you guys accepting yeah. donations through BitRefill also? Well, not yet, but probably we're gonna now that you mentioned we're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> we got it, you know. <laughs> that's uh yeah. something else, yeah. yeah. Add it add it to the list. We'll get we hope we're not gonna get in trouble for this. We're like, ah that's something extra. No, it sounds like a good idea if there's a if there's a way to do it, right? Um yeah, so yeah, for sure. To, to get it right, like I'm imagining Okay, so I'm imagining there's like a, yeah, there's a product like new story product or option or whatever. But yeah, as you say, people, so for people to pay their bills, instead of them having to go on to like separate different bill things, they can just pay, the, the bills get aggregated to you guys. And then this family can just pay one bill to you guys every month or whatever. Is that how that works? Right. Okay. Yeah. That's an awesome idea. Okay. So it makes it much simpler. Um, so you guys kind of handle the distribution from there. Um, yeah. It's just one simpler payment. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could see how, yeah. I mean, I could see how potentially people could, could, could pay other people like could pay some of these families bills if they wanted to directly right like if they knew the family or something um, yeah and we want to we want to do that sorry to interrupt uh, i want to we want to do that for el santo of course but uh we want to teach the other communities that have been built already you know with, with new story as i mentioned before they already have uh, uh eight communities ten communities built here so they can start paying with bitcoin right so they can use bitcoin for that of course That'd be awesome. Yeah, especially if um that was Jorge. Oh hey Jorge. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. If the yeah. uh if the five percent um yeah, if the five percent deal with a strike still maintain retains, then obviously that that would give people even more of a incentive to to do so, yeah. right? Uh, as well. So that's, exactly. that'd be great if that can stick around. And also if 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 we do happen to have any uh positive price movement over the next year or so, that will also demonstrate to people that yeah, okay, it goes down, but it also goes up so uh you know um yeah. there is some hope there okay that's cool well i guess I, yeah I'm i actually sorry. did have have one last question um so you said that new story started with like 10 10 families and then it grew to like 126 families this year and that yeah. you have plans to expand to like over 400 families next year where do you guys yeah. see new story like in five years um are you guys trying to expand outside of el zante or are you going to focus your efforts more on el zante still well, uh, Nusuri had built communities around El Salvador, not only in El Sante. They have Huayua, Huachapan, which is uh, uh, all around El Salvador. They have built communities. They have communities in Mexico. Uh, they have communities in Bolivia, if I recall, Bolivia. And, um, and, have, and the first one was in Haiti. That's the first community in Haiti. And uh, okay. in Mexico, wow. actually, they have built the first 3D printed community, you know, in the world. So that's ha that happened in Mexico. So five years from now, all be Central America, you know, we're gonna keep building. Nice, we have a 3D printed citadel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The dream. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's uh, it's lofty, lofty goals, but good goals nonetheless. And also, especially, yeah, um, yeah, what you're up to at New Story is awesome. Um, if people yeah. want to donate, um. People listening, yeah, it's um, uh, new story charity charity.org. Sorry, new story charity.org slash donate. 
um yes. just to be clear and also you can donate with fiat bitcoin i'm assuming potentially something else i'm not sure but um i'm sure there's lots of ways for people to donate um so yeah please do go ahead and and, and do so if you want to support the the project but yeah thanks Renato. i appreciate you uh coming on i'm sure it's been an uh, interesting listen for everyone out there to kind of get an update on like the situation in el salvador especially like your perspective and what you've been up to uh with strike and and el zante and, and new story especially um yeah is there anything you want to say like anywhere people can find you online or anything before you head out well if you can if you want to reach out on twitter hola that's hi in espanol hola i am renato that's my handle so feel free to, to text me wherever i'm here for you guys if you want to come to El Sonte and know about our our projects with the story you're welcome to come here uh i'm here in the bitcoin beach as well so everybody's welcome here well, I'm waiting for you guys. I wanted to ask, like, do you guys accept volunteers? Like, if somebody wanted to come and and help out like that on yes. the ground? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Who knows what the the next year beholds? Yeah. I um I'm hoping to come back out again at some point in the next uh, I'd say year to half, year and a half period. Um. So hopefully I can. And uh, yeah, it'd be good to meet you and yeah, see if there's any way I can help out in my short period of time I'm there. Um, <laughs> for sure, man. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks for coming on so much, man. I, I appreciate it. Um, as I said, I'm sure everyone listening has appreciated it. Um, for everyone listening, uh, thank you for for listening um, and finding out about uh, about new story and 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 kind of Renato's uh, journey. Uh, I hope everyone out there listening has an awesome hour, day, week, month, year, and life. Uh, keep loving life. Keep being happy. Keep helping others, and uh, keep on stacking the sats. And we'll see you all soon take care see you later or bolivia if i recall bolivia and um and have and the first one was in haiti that's the first community in haiti and uh okay. in mexico wow. actually they have built the first 3d printed community you know in the world so that's ha that happened in Mexico. So five years from now, all be Central America, you know, we're gonna keep building. Nice, we have a 3D printed citadel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The dream. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's uh, it's lofty, lofty goals, but good goals nonetheless. And also, especially, yeah, um, yeah, what you were up to at New Story is awesome. Um, if people yeah. want to donate, um people listening yeah, it's um newstory.org slash donate uh new story charity charity.org sorry new story charity.org slash donate ignore what i said yes. earlier new story charity.org slash donate um yes. just to be clear and also you can donate with fiat bitcoin i'm assuming potentially something else i'm not sure but um i'm sure there's lots of ways for people to donate um so yeah please do go ahead and and, and do so if you want to support the the project yeah, thanks, Renato. I appreciate you uh, coming on. I'm sure it's been an uh, interesting listen for everyone out there to kind of get an update on like the situation in El Salvador, especially like your perspective and what you've been up to uh, with Strike and, and El Zante and, and New Story, especially. Um, yeah, is there anything you want to say, like anywhere people can find you online or anything before you head out? Well, if you can, if you want to reach out on Twitter, hola, that's hi in Espanol. Hola, I am Renato. That's my handle. So feel free to text me wherever i'm here for you guys if you want to come to el sonte and know about our our projects with the story you're welcome to come here uh i'm here in the bitcoin beach as well so everybody's welcome here well i'm waiting for you guys <laughs> um I, I wanted to ask like do you guys accept volunteers like if somebody wanted to come and, and help out like that on yes. the ground yeah yes okay awesome okay. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, who knows what the the next year beholds? Yeah, I um I'm hoping to come back out again at some point in the next uh, I'd say year to half, year and a half period. Um, so hopefully I can, and uh, yeah, it'd be good to meet you and yeah, see if there's any way I can help out in my short period of time I'm there. Um, <laughs> for sure, man. That'd be awesome. All right, well, yeah, thanks for coming on so much, man. I I appreciate it. Um, as I said, I'm sure everyone listening has appreciated it. Um, for everyone listening. Uh, thank you for for listening um, and finding out about uh, about new story and 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 kind of Renato's uh, journey. Uh, I hope everyone out there listening has an awesome hour, day, week, month, year, and life. 
uh keep loving life keep being happy keep helping others and uh keep on stacking the sats and we'll see you all soon take care see you later bye